They're the secrets of ancient Egypt, which for thousands of years lay submerged beneath the Mediterranean. The treasures belong to two sunken cities, which were thought to be the stuff of myth. For centuries, Heraclean was spoken of like a myth, an Egyptian city of wealth, temples, and bustling harbors that somehow vanished without a trace. When divers finally uncovered its ruins beneath the Mediterranean, many thought the mystery was over. It had simply sunk. Archaeologists say the relics were found at the site of a sunken city in the waters of Abukir Bay. But not all things are so simple. A recent dive using an advanced underwater drone revealed something no one expected. Evidence that this city's end was far darker, far stranger than anyone imagined. What the drone captured has left archaeologists stunned and terrified, rewriting the story of Egypt's most powerful lost city and raising questions about forces long buried beneath the sea. A legend resurfaces. Beneath the waves of the Mediterranean, buried under centuries of sand and silt, lies the forgotten gateway to Egypt's empire, Thonis Heracleion. For centuries, it survived only as a whisper in ancient Greek writings, a phantom city mentioned in dusty scrolls. Herodotus, the famous Greek storyteller, wrote about a magnificent port city at the mouth of the Nile, a place of incredible wealth and religious importance, where the great hero Heracles himself first set foot in Egypt. It was a gateway, the mandatory first stop for all Greek ships, a bustling hub of international trade that controlled the flow of goods into the mighty Egyptian empire. Egyptian records spoke of a city called Thonis, the master of the Nile's entrance. For the longest time, Everyone believed these were two separate legendary places, lost forever to time. You see, the problem was, no one could find them. For centuries, archaeologists searched the Egyptian coastline, but Thonis Heracleion remained a ghost, its name nearly erased from human memory. It seemed destined to be remembered as a myth, a fabrication, much like the fabled city of Atlantis. But the thing nobody tells you is that sometimes, the most fantastic legends are rooted in cold, hard reality. In the year 2000, after years of painstaking research, a French underwater archaeologist named Frank Gaudio decided to look where no one else had thought to, not on land, but miles out into the sea. Leading a team from the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology, he brought sophisticated equipment to the murky waters of Abakir Bay, about four miles off the modern coast. Using advanced survey tools like magnetic resonance magnetometers, they began scanning the seabed, hunting for anomalies beneath the thick layers of sand and clay that had accumulated over a millennium. It took years, but slowly, a picture began to emerge. Faint outlines of walls, structures, and harbor basins appeared on their screens. What they found was beyond anyone's wildest dreams. Thirty feet below the surface, perfectly preserved by the silt and sea, lay the sprawling, magnificent ruins of a lost city. Colossal statues, some over 16 feet tall, were found lying on the seafloor, toppled but not broken. They found the ruins of the Grand Temple of Amun, the King of the Gods, a place where pharaohs had to be coronated to legitimize their rule over the kingdom. They uncovered over 700 ancient anchors arranged in a massive ship graveyard, proof of the city's immense maritime activity. Gold coins, delicate jewelry, and intricate ritual objects were scattered across the site. And most importantly, they found a massive stone slab, a stele, inscribed with a decree from Pharaoh Nectanebo I. On it, clear as day, were both names, Thonis and Heracleion. The myth was real. The two cities were one and the same. It was a civilization frozen in time, a discovery that would rewrite history books. But as incredible as all this was, Nobody could have predicted the most shocking discovery was yet to come. Found by a machine venturing where no human could, a terrifying secret was still waiting in the dark. A message from the deep. Years after the initial discovery, the exploration of Thonis Heracleion continues. The city is massive, covering an area of 11 by 15 kilometers, and archaeologists estimate that even after two decades of work, they have uncovered only 5% of its secrets. The bulk of the exploration today isn't just done by human divers, who are limited by time and pressure. It's done by remotely operated vehicles, or ROVS, 
underwater drones equipped with high-definition cameras and sophisticated sonar, capable of navigating the city's most dangerous and inaccessible corners. It was one of these drones that would make a discovery that sent a wave of unease through the entire research team. The mission that day seemed routine. The drone was sent to investigate a faint anomaly detected on the survey scans, located in a section of the city that had yet to be mapped. It showed a narrow corridor, a small gap between two massive sections of a collapsed stone wall. To a human diver, it would have been too risky. But for the nimble drone, it was a doorway into the unknown. As it maneuvered through the tight passage, its powerful lights illuminated the darkness. What appeared on the video feed back on the research vessel was baffling. On the other side of the corridor, the drone's camera revealed massive granite blocks, but they weren't just a random pile of rubble from the city's collapse. They were stacked and angled in a way that no natural process could explain. It's hard to believe, but the reality is that these blocks were joined together with a strange interlocking design. It was a pattern unlike anything previously documented at the site, or at any other ancient Egyptian site for that matter. The formation looked less like it was built and more like it was engineered, with a precision that seemed almost alien. The clean lines and tight fits were so perfect that the team on the surface was stunned into silence. One of the lead archaeologists was reportedly recorded stating, no human can build this. The drone sensors relayed the data, and an urgent alert flashed across the screen for the documentary crew observing the mission. They had stumbled upon something entirely new, something that defied the known rules of ancient construction. As the drone pushed forward, the team realized this impossible structure wasn't small. It extended far beyond the corridor, disappearing into the silt like the edge of a forgotten Cyclopean Avenue. On the face of one of the stones, in an area the map suggested should be empty, the drone's camera caught the faint outline of an ancient inscription, one that had not yet been deciphered. This discovery did more than just present a new puzzle, it carried a deeply sobering implication. The ground turned to water. The discovery of the new, impossibly engineered section of Heraclean was a watershed moment. Everybody was shocked when they heard this, but the mystery of how it was built was quickly overshadowed by a far more terrifying question. How did it fall? The experts knew that the city was built on unstable ground, a thick bed of soft clay, and waterlogged silt at the mouth of the Nile River. The prevailing theory for years was that a combination of factors, a slow rise in sea levels, the immense weight of the city's giant temples and statues, and perhaps a powerful earthquake, led to its gradual sinking over several decades. But this new discovery changed everything. The fact that this bizarrely constructed corridor of ruins had collapsed in the same catastrophic way as the rest of the city meant that the scale of the ancient disaster was far, far greater than anyone had ever believed. This wasn't a slow, gentle sinking. The evidence now pointed to a single, violent, and unimaginably rapid event. Scientists revisited the geological data and came to a chilling conclusion. The city had been destroyed by a phenomenon known as soil liquefaction. You see, during a powerful earthquake, the intense shaking can cause water-saturated soil, like the clay beneath Heraclean, to lose its strength and behave like a liquid. In an instant, solid ground turns to soup. Imagine the horror. In a matter of minutes, the very earth beneath the city gave way. The massive, multi-ton stone blocks of the temples and colossal statues wouldn't have just sunk. They would have been tossed around like bath toys in a churning sea of liquid mud. The city didn't just sink into the sea, it was swallowed by the ground it was built on. The energy required for such a massive liquefaction event would have been staggering, suggesting an earthquake of incredible magnitude, possibly accompanied by a devastating tsunami that washed over the entire area. This new evidence forced researchers to reconsider the speed and violence of the city's destruction. This wasn't a tragedy that unfolded over a generation, it was an apocalypse that likely happened in a single day. But the most terrifying part of this revelation wasn't about the past, it was about the present. Gods, Gold, and Galleys Before its terrifying end, Thanis Heraklion was a city of incredible vibrancy and life, a true crossroads of the ancient world. The ongoing excavations paint a picture of a multicultural metropolis, 
a place where Egyptian and Greek cultures mingled freely. The drone and diving teams didn't just find impossible structures, they found the soul of the city. Deep in the main channel, they found the remains of a Greek sanctuary dedicated to Aphrodite, filled with imported bronze statuettes and ceramics. Right next to it stood the Grand Egyptian Temple to Amun Garib. This suggests a level of tolerance and integration that was rare in the ancient world. Greek mercenaries, hired to defend the kingdom's gateway, likely had their own places of worship alongside the native Egyptian gods. The religious life of the city was intense. Heraclean was the center for the celebration of the mysteries of Osiris, one of the most important religious festivals in ancient Egypt. Every year, a ceremonial boat carrying a figure of the god of the underworld would be sailed in a grand procession from the temple in Heraklion to a neighboring city. Archaeologists have found dozens of smaller ritual boats, beautiful lead and bronze statuettes, and silver offering plates, all testifying to the city's sacred role. Perhaps the most stunning find was an 80-foot-long wooden galley, a type of ship known as a barris, which was found almost perfectly preserved under the clay. For centuries, this ship was only known from the writings of Herodotus, who described its unique construction in detail. Scholars had long debated whether his description was accurate, and many dismissed it. The discovery of Ship 17, as it's called, proved Herodotus was right all along, confirming the incredible shipbuilding skills of the ancient Egyptians. They even found everyday items that tell a more personal story. Woven baskets still containing grape and dome palm fruit seeds were discovered, sealed under the clay for over 2,000 years. These humble artifacts are invaluable to scientists, offering a direct glimpse into the diet and agriculture of the period. But for every answer these finds provide, they raise more questions. This was a city that believed itself to be eternal, protected by the most powerful gods. So what really happened on that fateful day? Could a simple earthquake explain everything? Or is there a missing piece to this puzzle? A sunken city's final secret? The revelation that Thonis Heracleion was destroyed by a massive soil liquefaction event sent a chill through the scientific community for a very specific reason the geological conditions that existed in the Nile Delta 2,000 years ago. The unstable, waterlogged layers of clay and silt are still present today. In fact, some of the most populated and vital modern cities in the region are built on that very same foundation. The sobering reality is that what happened to Heracleion was not a one-time, mystical event. It was the result of geology and physics, forces that are still very much at play. Some experts have voiced serious concern that these same geological time bombs could still threaten the modern delta. Now, think about this. Are we really so different from the people of Heraclean? We build our massive cities, our concrete jungles, on coastlines and river deltas all over the world. We trust that the ground beneath our feet is solid. But is it? The story of Heracleon serves as a terrifying reminder that the earth is a dynamic and sometimes violent place. The very ground can betray us in an instant. Could a similar catastrophe happen again? The thing is, many geologists say it's not a question of if, but when. We are still learning about the immense power of these natural events, and the story of this sunken city provides crucial, if horrifying, data. The discovery of that impossibly built structure by the drone raises even more questions. Was it some kind of ancient technology designed to withstand the unstable ground, a technology that ultimately failed, or was it something else entirely? We still don't know what the strange inscription says. What other secrets lie hidden beneath the silt, and could the city's final, terrifying warning be one we have yet to decipher? What do you think really happened? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more journeys into the unknown.